What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be working on the heavy Chevy project here. We're gonna be installing these crew cab uh, smart liner floor mats, all weather mats, as well as a set of factory tow hooks because mine were removed at some point, I'm assuming because the previous owner had a plow on it, it looked like. And then we're gonna also replace the fuel door stops that are missing. I probably won't show that because that's super easy. And I'll also be programming and installing just a universal garage door clicker here for the visor since unlike the Ram, it doesn't have the home link, which I really will miss. So for the 1500 HD, it actually uses the same tow hooks as I believe the 25 and 3500s. At least that's what I ordered off eBay. I got these for about 85 bucks used or 100 somewhere around there. I will post them brand new down in the video description as well as a universal garage door opener that I'm using as well as the smart liners. Everything we're doing in this video, I will post a link down in the description if you want to buy it. So... There's a little newspaper stuck to this. It looks like the guy rattle canned it before he packaged them up, but the paint was still a little wet and this stuck, but that'll wear off as it rains. Uh, I came with these mounting bolts. Now, I kind of lined it up and the bolts seem rather short, especially this one here, because as you see, the threads don't start right away. It's only right there that it starts to catch and then it still has to go through the frame and I would like it to come through there farther. So I actually stopped at the hardware store and got some longer grade 10.9 bolts because they are metric m12 by 1.75 thread pitch in case you're wondering and uh we're going to use those with some thread locker so if you're using the factory bolts these are an 18 millimeter socket that you'll need for the head of this bolt the ones i got from the hardware store are a 19 millimeter or three quarter socket in addition to using blue thread locker i'm also putting a normal washer and a split lock washer on each bolt because overkill is underrated. So as I already mentioned, these are M12 by 1.75 thread pitch bolts. However, I have three different lengths. The center section here is fully drilled through and threaded except for a tiny section in the center. Uh, it is drilled, but it's not threaded the whole way. Basically, I have it lined up how it's gonna tighten here. And you can see the small gap between the bolts is about where it is not threaded inside. So I have a 40 millimeter bolt coming in this side and then a 45 millimeter coming in from this side if i tried using two 45s they would hit and it wouldn't get tight so important to note that if you're going to use aftermarket bolts you got to make sure they're not too long and then i have even longer ones since it takes a while for the threads to start here i got 50 millimeter ones for this one and there's plenty of room there it comes through uh, this hole all the way through and I don't believe there's anything in the way so shouldn't have any problem there but it's gonna get in there a little bit farther than those little short bolts and make me feel a little better so let's get started so the tow hooks do have an R or an L on them depending what side this is the R so it's gonna go on the right side but the R is gonna face down towards the ground and you can see there's a bigger hole in the frame and then behind it is a smaller one the smaller one is gonna line up with this back hole and then you can see here and here there's two side holes that's where the bolts are going to come in to the tow hook from the outside of the frame so it should go like this with the hook looping towards the outside of the truck now i'll put a little bit of loctite on each of the bolts here before we get them started just as an extra precaution you don't have to do this all right, we're under the truck here. Like I said, the bottom bolt is now started. And as I mentioned, this is a 19 mil or three quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get this cinched up a little bit with the impact to save some time. But I'm not gonna tighten it all the way yet as I wanna still be able to move it a bit to get the side holes lined up here. So I've got the 45 millimeter long one here and I'm gonna come in from the side. I have to lift up on it just a bit to get it started there, which is why I left that other one loose for now. Now I've gone ahead and just snugged that one down. Again, left it loose in case I gotta move it a little bit to get the last one in. And we're gonna put some Loctite and the 40 millimeter bolt coming in from this side. Then uh, we're good to tighten them all down. Now the two side ones went in by hand pretty much. This one, the threaded holes in the tow hook were a little rustier, like it had not had a bolt in it for longer. So I did have to ram the bolt in and out a few times to get it to kind of free up a bit. But I have all three of them started now. And one little tip I'm gonna give you is 
You see how the tow hook can move forward and back just a little bit? So I know it's hard to see on camera, but it is going back and forth a good like eighth inch. So what I recommend doing is pulling forward towards the front of the truck while you tighten this bottom bolt. And then once that one's tight, then you can tighten your two side ones. What that one's gonna do is if you have it tightened in the most forward position, you're less likely that even with the bolts are tight, the hook won't jar forward and shear your bolts. Now, the likelihood of that happening is pretty low. The tow hook would probably break first, but I'm just a little OCD and that's how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna pull this forward, tighten up this bottom one, and then the side two. I'm just gonna hit it with my impact. I don't have torque specs, but I would guess you're probably good from 50 to 75 foot pounds on the safe side. There we are, fully tightened down, nice and sturdy and beefy. And now I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps on the other side. As you can see, it's nice and centered in the lower bumper cover cutout, exactly as it should be. All right, there we go, guys. Both tow hooks installed. Much more functional now. And now we can move on to the garage opener. All right, baby steps, guys, baby steps. But by the time we're done with this thing, it will do everything I want and need it to. And now we can move on to the fuel door stops. They were completely missing, so the metal was touching the metal and I didn't want my cherry paint to be uh, damaged, so those just pushed on. A uh, little bit of lube uh, around the little ends and they pushed through and uh, just kind of hold into place. So now, nice solid thud when I shut it. Now lastly, we can move on to the Smart Liner all-weather mats. So I'm gonna start by removing my old floor mats, the carpeted ones here. All right, now I really should vacuum first, but I don't have a shop vac or a vacuum that I can bring outside here, so just gonna throw these in for now. It's not too terribly dirty anyway, and I'll probably have Spencer's detailing hit this thing before winter. But here's the driver's side one. It does have a hook hole right here, but my truck does not have that. So if you have it, make sure you use it. Get it underneath the pedals here. Go to the wide angle so you guys can see better. And it's gonna rest something like that. Pretty good fitment, I would say. Hugs this nice. Goes up beyond the pedals, so any slush or snow or anything on your shoe or boot will melt off. A Little bit of a gap here, but nothing too crazy. And again, pretty good fit along the back here, especially for not having that hook. Now, if you don't like these Smart Liner stickers, you can peel them off. I may do that, who knows, I'll leave them for now though. Here's the passenger one, and on the bottom of each one, it'll say what position. As you see here, it says RH, so that's right hand. The driver's side had LH for left hand. This one does not have a hook hole, but again, neither does my truck. Okay, and again, pretty good fitment, fits nice up here in the corner and up here. And again, I would like it to go a little bit higher, but I guess most people don't have their feet jammed way up there. They're usually down here. And then over here, again, small gap, nothing huge. But as you see, it goes down a bit here. I think that as it gets used more and there's more weight put on it, it'll kind of settle in a little bit better. And then the rear, at least for the crew cab, is all one piece. I think it is for the extended cabs too, but I'm not sure. But you'll see at the bottom left of the mat here, there's kind of a little tab. That is gonna go towards the back of the truck here. So it's gonna go in the truck just like this. This is gonna be the front. Tabs towards the rear. I recommend moving the seats up for a little bit better install. Also, put the front end down first. That way you can kind of tuck it underneath the seat rails here. And then the back will drop in. Like so. 
and then repeat the same steps on the other side. Get in there. And there we go, there's the rear row, covers over the hump nice, good fitment around here. You can still open your cup holders. It does catch it and push it down just a little bit. Not a big deal, still operational. The most annoying thing about the rear mat, I would say, is if there's any weight right here, it is formed a little bit high, so if there's any pressure here, it can throw the rest of this off a little bit. As you see, when I pushed there, it kind of forced this up. So it'll take some time to wear in, but I've never seen even these 3D laser printed ones, WeatherTech, Husky. Uh, I've tried multiple different brands on my other trucks and they've all got their flaws. None of them fit perfectly. So for the price, uh, these are pretty good. As you can see, covers under the seat there, wraps around there, does not cover the rear sill. Has a lip on the back side goes all the way in front of the seats and same on the passenger side. Also fits pretty good along the inner door panel there. There's no issues with it hitting and there's no huge gaps or anything. So if anything falls out of your lap, it'll most likely land uh, on the all weather mat. I should mention that these also have a limited lifetime warranty. And if you get these in the shipping package, especially the rear ones, if they were folded up, which mine were, the rear piece is so big, they fold it. Uh, if you have any fitment issues, if there's like too much of a bend or something, fold it the opposite direction for a little while. Otherwise, you can carefully use like a hairdryer or a heat gun. Don't use an open flame or a torch, but just like a heat source such as a hairdryer to make it a little more malleable. And uh, you should be able to bend it and get it to shape a little bit better. Otherwise, just be patient with it. Uh, they usually form a little bit better after using them for a few months. So that is gonna do it today, guys, for the heavy Chevy episode. Just a couple things there jumbled into one video. That way we're not making a ton of videos on stupid little things. But so I figured I'd do like four things in one. If this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button, comment down below with any questions, check out my other videos on the channel. Also check out all my socials, subscribe for more videos like this. And as always guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day.